The WNBA Finals just recorded its largest audience since 2001, and all of this was without the one and only Caitlin Clark. What's up, you guys? I'm Rachel Demita, and welcome to the Courtside Club. Game two of the WNBA Finals wrapped up 1.35 million viewers, and as you can see from this chart right here, it had been over 20 years since the WNBA Finals had seen over a million viewers, so this was huge news for the WNBA, and the ratings have been a massive topic of discussion for this entire season. And as we saw with Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever's viewership, in the first round of the WNBA playoffs, there had been a lot of discussions around the topic of if the WNBA ratings would fall off when the Indiana Fever were eliminated from the playoffs. And just recently, Sue Bird talked about this on her podcast, and she actually called out ESPN and Stephen A. Smith for how they were covering the WNBA ratings. So here is what she had to say. She said, viewership numbers with Caitlin Clark are astronomical. She is a big draw. She brings in all the things. And yes, the games where she's not playing have low viewership. But in the WNBA playoffs, and we'll use the semifinals where Caitlin obviously is not in it because her team lost, are still breaking records from previous WNBA years. They're still cracking a million viewers. She goes on to say, so these numbers are still really high and they're still really meaningful. And yet some people continue to flip that. I've seen Stephen A. Smith talk about it. I've seen Shannon Sharp talk about it. And what I don't understand is they work for ESPN. So why are you hating on a business that ESPN is in? I want to say, the semifinal games are up like 130%, and that's without Caitlin. Now, Stephen A. Smith is no stranger to a healthy debate, and he heard what Sue Bird had to say, and he responded to that on his own podcast. We're in the news business. What do you mean ESPN? So because I work at my day job on ESPN, I'm supposed to ignore the facts? I'm supposed to ignore the astronomical impact she has had compared to others, how Team USA was stupid for not putting on a team to make sure you help uplift the sport even more. Don't y'all want a greater profile? Don't y'all want more notoriety? Don't y'all want more hype? I understand that it's going on still without her now that she's out of the playoffs because the games have been great. But the fact of the matter is she swelled the interest in the sport. That made people stick around and want to watch the others. A rising tide lifts all boats, which is what we were saying both Shannon Sharp and myself, when we address that issue. Why would you say a quote like that? We work for ESPN, so I'm supposed to turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to the facts? That ain't what we do. And while I am quite sure, Sue Bird, that you can educate me on a game of basketball, even though I've been covering it for 30 years, because you are phenomenal. You are one beautiful human being. I love you to death. You know I do. You know I do. But I would say this to you respectfully, Sue Bird. You know basketball. I kind of know news. I agree so much with what Stephen A. Smith had to say here, and this is a topic that we have been talking about on this channel for the entirety of the WNBA season. And what I don't understand with what Sue Bird has to say is it feels like to me sometimes when we talk about the WNBA, we are almost talking about it as a charity case. And I know that sounds really harsh, but it that's what it feels like sometimes. It feels like you kind of have to step lightly and tread lightly around the facts that are like we're talking about here, ratings, numbers, viewership, those sort of things. And we shouldn't have to do that. That is not something that we do with any other sport. And like we talked about in a previous video, Candace Parker came out and she said that a lot of players are really sensitive to criticism and, and debate around the sport because for many, many years, the WNBA has been kind of the, the butt of jokes. It has been a punching bag for a lot of people. And a lot of people have, have really said some nasty things around women's basketball. There has been a ton of jokes made about the sport. So that's why there is a certain level of sensitivity to criticism. However, I think that us as media players, coaches, all of these people need to get over that fact very quickly because now the WNBA is reaching a place where they are joining the big leagues of other sports. And in order to do that, you have to push all of these other things to the side. We can't just keep stepping around it and saying that because you're accurately covering the ratings and accurately covering how many people were 
exponentially more, what am I trying to say? How many more exponentially more people were watching Kaylin Clark games than any other games in the league? Like that is a new story that we should be covering and we should be covering that unapologetically. I also am a fan of Sue Bird and she knows the game, I'm sure a hundred times better than I do. She played at the highest level, Hall of Famer, all of the things. However, I do think that with some of these topics, she is just treading really lightly and we shouldn't have to do that. It shouldn't be sensitive to be able to share what the facts, what the statistics, and what the numbers are. So with that, I'm going to share those numbers with you guys. So for context, here are the numbers for the 2023 WNBA Finals. So game one, 700,000, game two, 600,000, game three, 600,000, game four, almost 900,000, and the series averaged around 728,000 viewers for the entire finals. Now we are already seeing game one and game two go over a million viewers. However, if we look at the game two matchup from the Indiana Fever versus the Connecticut Sun, they garnered 2.5 million viewers on ESPN. So that is still almost double the amount of viewers that we are seeing in the WNBA finals. And if we take it a step further and look at the final WNBA regular season viewership averages across all networks, so these are all of the games across all the networks, including ION, including NBA TV, which not a lot of households have. If we put all those together and average them, the Caitlin Clark games had over 1.178 million viewers. So that is on average how many people were tuning in every single week to watch Caitlin Clark. All other games averaged 394,000 views. Sorry guys, one thing that I forgot to mention is when Caitlin Clark was at Iowa and she was in the national championship game, that game peaked at 24 million viewers. So I feel like it's safe to say that if the Indiana Fever ever make it to the WNBA finals or back to that championship level stage, the WNBA viewership is going to be astronomical. It is going to be numbers that we have never seen before. And one more stat that I thought was super interesting is that the Indiana Fever games actually averaged more viewership across all networks than the San Antonio Spurs and the Philadelphia 76ers. And those are two NBA franchises. Of course, NBA has a lot more games and a lot of them are on league pass and this and that, and it is hard to tune in. However, those numbers make a huge statement. So like Stephen A. Smith said in his episode, and I have to agree with him here, I I think a lot of the viewership for the WNBA finals has come from the Caitlin Clark effect. Now, I do also think that the New York Liberty and the Minnesota Lynx are two great basketball teams. They play basketball the right way. There's not a lot of drama surrounding them. They haven't been part of this messy side of the WNBA. So I think those factors come into play as well. And I think this is great basketball that we are getting in the finals. And hopefully we get more of that in games three, four, and maybe five. But I think that it is very naive to say that some of this viewership and the reason that people have stuck around this season to watch the WNBA finals is not because of Caitlin Clark. This is all good news for every party involved. It's great for Caitlin Clark. It's great for the Indiana Fever and it's great for the entire league. And if you guys want to see more of the statistics and reports, I've made a couple other videos surrounding these sorts of topics. So make sure that you check those out. And of course, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and click that little subscribe button because we upload new videos every single week. And with that, you guys, I'll see you next time. Ooh, yeah, nah.